What's up guys, Tuki here, back again with some more NHL 16 and another edition, or another episode, whatever you want to call it. This is Nations United, and we move on to yet another draft after another failure of a season, finishing 22nd overall in the past season now. A little bit better than what we did the year before, and holy shit, we won the lottery again. Are you kidding me? We won the lottery again. We had the 8th pick, and we moved up to number 3. That is the second year in a row we've moved up to the third overall pick. That is fantastic. My God. So in terms of the picks we're making, we're not having much luck. But in terms of winning the lottery, things are looking pretty good for us. Now the question is whether or not we have a player here in these uh, in the top five that is available to us. And we do. There is one. It is the power forward, Russell Sexton, and we will do everything we can. He's actually an undersized power forward, only five foot eleven. Aside from that, is there anybody else in the first round? We have Savage, a center, Gerber, a Russian defenseman. Keep in mind, I will take a look, or I will write down pretty much everybody that is available. And that way, you know, we can go and look to see if there's somebody we should have taken before. Anyway... Right now, the main priority is drafting Sexton. I'm gonna take our, I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna take our chances and hope he doesn't get picked. The Ottawa Senators get a franchise level goalie, and the Blue Jackets get an elite level defender. So we have our guy without having to do anything. It will be Sexton. It does say only bottom six, but hopefully, or this works out for us. Bottom six power forward. Let's see, and he is medium. Elite. Oh my god, this episode could not have started off any better. Winning the lottery and getting a true elite level prospect third overall. What a fantastic start. Alright guys, we've skipped forward to the second round. Now I did want to show you what happened with the other two players from the uh, from really the first round bracket that we had available to us. Obviously we took Sexton, the first guy that we could have acquired, that we could have drafted, was Savage, high, uh, or not high, excuse me, medium top six, he went to Tampa Bay. The other one, and it hurts, the German defenseman Gerber, elite potential to Colorado. We are absolutely taking a look at him. The second we can start to make a trade, we're absolutely going to look to get him. Fortunately, nobody else uh, that we have available to us has been picked. There are four people projected to go here in the second round. And we're going to see who we have available. We have uh, the center buyers. I believe that is Denmark. Bigris, Denmark as well. Where are the other two? We are missing a Piton and a Bertram. There's Pitton and there's Bertram. Now, see, they're second to third. So despite the fact that we need a defenseman, I think I need to try and take the best player available. Bigris is listed as top nine. Buyers listed as a playmaker or as a high bottom six playmaker and I think I'm gonna take the playmaker I think I don't know this one's tough I'm gonna go with Byers and just hope that he is better than what it shows and he was actually bottom six so that's pretty disappointing do we have another pick in the second round we do and we will see if anybody's still available and this will probably be the last pick I make unless we end up getting a really decent player. So Biggers, Piton, or Bertram, were any of them taken? They were not. So we'll most likely take Biggers here. Like I said, I know we need defensemen. There are plenty of defensemen in the third round and onward. I don't expect them to be that great. But obviously trying to get Gerber from Colorado is going to be the main objective. So Ronald Biggers will be our next player drafted. He ends up being even worse than what Byers was. So that is pretty disappointing. Now, I completely forgot. We had four second-round picks, so we have here the 21st pick here in the second round, and then we have the 28th. So we'll still be able to take uh, Pitton and Bertram and hope that these guys are at least half decent. Honestly, with Gerber, and a few of you guys have mentioned this, if it comes down to it, we will absolutely trade somebody like a Kopitar to get him. Let's see, Bertram ends up being low top six, so, so far... Not the uh, not the most ideal picks, and Piton is still available, so we'll take him next and hope that we can make up, uh, you know, just get some better picks here 
better prospects in the later rounds. We will take Paton, the sniper, I think I pronounced his name four different ways. He ends up being the best pick in a while, medium top nine. But that'll do it for the draft, most likely. We'll see what happens here. And indeed, guys, that is it for the draft. Here is the ridiculous list of players that we drafted, which includes pretty much the majority of all players that were available to us in this draft. There's actually probably less than 10 players that were available to us that we didn't end up drafting. Of course, the most important ones, you know, going early on, Savage to Tampa, Gerber to the Colorado Avalanche. But we got a couple of players that we have to re-sign here, and we'll try to go through this as quick as possible because I've recently discovered that the re-sign phase is where a lot of the uh, time goes into these episodes. So let's get this done as soon as possible. We did draft two goalies, Ruchin, who I think we took in the third round, third round for him. And then Cameron Chapman, we took in the seventh round, not projected to be drafted, ends up being backup potential. So that was a pretty nice surprise. Roman Yossi needs a new deal. We have $32 million in cap space, so we are going to just look to lock him up long term. I know he's only looking for 6.1. We will offer him 6.5 just because we need the money. Mueller needs a new deal. I am going to try and be cheap as hell and get him for eight years because he is going to be on this team for a very, very long time. We'll see if he accepts six million. Lucas Spiza? Oh, I'm not sure here. I'm not sure. Based on player progression, we might not need him. I think I'll resign him. I'll resign him for one year, give him a little bit more money then uh, he should probably be getting just to make sure he signs. And, of course, we might need a bit of help in terms of a cap space. Let's see. We got Fakulski here. Let's see if we can get him to an entry level, or not an entry level, but a uh, max contract for a two-way. Simon Schutz needs a new contract, and we'll do the same thing. Again, very time-consuming stuff, but I know a lot of people like to see this. Uh, Bertram, a defenseman we drafted, it's pretty decent. X will be as well. Nobody as good as what hopefully Gerber will be because we are absolutely acquiring him. If he's top four or higher, we're going for him. Since Shalopfer needs a new deal, pretty disappointed in his development so far. I was certainly hoping he'd be low 80s by this point. It's not looking like he's going to be a regular NHLer, which... It's pretty disappointing for someone out of the very first draft, as we saw in the Islanders mode. Um, he actually had fairly decent value, so or at least very uh, fairly decent potential. Uh, Tobias Reeder, I'm not sure how much longer we'll have him for, but we'll give him a decent contract. Again, we have so much cap space that we need to fill right now, and I am afraid because guys like Fedotenko and Antropov aren't there anymore. So I might not be able to cheat the system, uh, you know, and sign guys to these ridiculous contracts. I'm going to cheat with Dreisaitl as well. Fact is, he's not even asking for that much money. But $4 million per for eight years, I'm cool with that. <laughs> Again, not as realistic. It is certainly cheap as hell. Rodrigo Abols, I'll get for three years. Give him 1.5. Hopefully I'm not going overboard and putting us into a rough cap spot, but I might be. I genuinely don't know. I haven't been keeping track. I can't imagine, though, with the money we're throwing around, anybody will decline. So we're going to get to move on to free agency very quickly. And we will, of course, take a look for the usual suspects, although I don't think any of the free agents we mentioned in a few episodes back will be able. We'll let go of Marcel Gotch. We'll be heading free agency is what I'm trying to say. Hishier, who now is with us in uh, both series. Hopefully he can turn it around here. Still only a 71 overall. And that will do it for that. So let's re-sign everybody, see how much cap space we're working with, and then take it from there. Like I said, I can't imagine anybody declining. Reader, Dreisaitl, Mueller. Is everybody going to accept? I can't imagine that they won't. And indeed, they did. I will double-check one more time. And then, of course, we'll move on to the resign phase. So 13 mil. 13 mil isn't too bad. That will definitely change. It'll definitely change. Sexton, by the way, still elite potential. So that's good. What was his overall? 73. So he could boost up to a low 80 by the time the season starts. Let's move on, though, 
to free agency. We'll take a quick look at the list. I really don't expect anybody, anybody to be there. And again, for the most part, I have to recognize them off of value. Otherwise, we get into the problem of, oh, let's Google search. And that's the thing. If they're not a real person, I don't know. I cannot find out what their nationality is. And that's a very, very big problem. I don't believe any of these guys are available to us. I'm actually fairly certain, but that's like the problem. Like right now with Vancouver, you know, if this was the Vancouver series, I could just be like, oh, for example, I mean, none of these guys. Say Stillman, which he might be. He might be Ukrainian. I don't know. I have no way to check, so I can't sign him. And that is a very big problem, but it's crazy that there's a... That's weird. Leslie moved up the high franchise, but he's a 75 overall in the last year of his development. I do quickly want to take a look at goalies. Again, I don't think there will be anybody here. There is not, so that will uh, I'll do it for free agency, but let's take a look at Gerber. I want to see what Gerber looks like here and uh, see if it's worth making a deal for him. Hopefully his value isn't too high, and it's not, which could be a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, and there he is. I think it would be worth getting him. He's not going to be immediate help. Andreas Hines is German as well. So those are two guys that we could try and get from Colorado. I, I didn't plan on getting Hines, obviously. But uh, you know what? Fuck it. Let's just see. Is there anybody else here uh, that we could pick up? And again, we're just going off a of country. Marco Renz. Wasn't he ours? No, he wasn't. Uh, maybe we'll tack him on there, too. Uh, they have Stanislav Jamna. Fuck me. Okay, they have a lot of guys in play. So give me a minute, and I'll see if I can work out a trade. So I kind of cheated this a little bit, but it's a move I felt like we had to make. It is Sven Berchke, who, of course, has now passed his developmental ages. He's now 27. He locked in an 83 overall. Not too helpful. Tim Bozon, who just isn't fitting in. And a first-round pick in 2026, so our uh, most recent draft pick that we've now gained access to. We send that uh, that trio of assets to Colorado for Heinz, Gerber, Jamnoff, and a fifth and a sixth in the next draft. So we get two top nine guys and Gerber. I think that's a pretty fair trade. Now, guys, we've made our first trade, and it's a pretty big one. We send Hichier, who's dropped to AHL top six potential. Despite that, still had pretty good trade value. And we also throw in Kondratiev, who is 70 potential and 80 overall. So it's a little bit of a risk, but I really don't... He's going to be down in Iowa because we had some decent progression from other players. So he's going to be down in Iowa, and I figured why not use his trade value to help us get something. We also package in Drury, who we just drafted, and a seventh-round pick from Anaheim this year to Tampa Bay. For Savage, the other big pick from the past first round that we could have had, and Joseph, who they took in the second round. We've also gone out and made this move, and this is just odd. We took Bigrus in the first round or the second round? I think it was the second round. Maybe it was the first I don't remember. No, it was the first round. We took Bigrus in the first round. He has really good trade value for someone, you know, with HL top six forward potential. So we send him to Florida straight up. For Nisimov, who was another second-round pick, who's top nine forward potential. I, I don't know why, but, you know, Biggers might turn into something, but a top nine for an HL potential guy seems like a steal to me. Next up, and this is probably a little bit of a one-sided trade. I probably could have gotten more out of Edmonton. But we send AHL potential guys, four of them to be exact, to Edmonton for a Malkin, who they just took I believe in the third round of the most recent draft, he is top nine for potential. We also get a sixth round pick. Not a bad bit of business, in my opinion. It clears out some contracts and gets this team into a little bit of a better spot with a better prospect. Next up, it's a trade. Two more AHL potential guys. Now, Gogolev is the reason this worked. He actually has some trade value. But again, it's two AHL prospects for a second and a fourth round pick. Gogolev might turn into something. The game's not telling me that he will. So we go out and get a second rounder. Who knows who that will eventually be. But I'm more than happy with this trade. This next trade's a bit sad because these are all defensemen that we took, I believe, in this draft, in this past draft. But we kind of fleece Anaheim a little bit, getting their second and pretty much everything else from the upcoming draft. 
Although, I can't help but wonder if maybe I could have gotten a little bit more, but who cares. And now, here is where things get really risky. We're sending away five seven D potential guys, including Mo Gilney, who is relatively high up in overall, I think at like a 79 and 80. But we send them to Calgary for their first and second round pick in the next draft. Now, any of these guys could easily jump up to top six. Hell, maybe even top four. Look at what Zach Leslie was in free agency. I think he starts off at top six, maybe top four. And he was high franchise, for Christ's sake. But, yeah, more than happy with this trade as well. This trade is also a little bit risky and completely unrealistic. But remember, this will be our third first-round pick, and that is the cutoff point for one draft, even though handicapping ourselves and handcuffing ourselves even further in this series is probably unnecessary. It's Exelby, who we just drafted. Puzic, Schutz, and other guys that could probably be on our NHL roster. But they're all 7 deep potential, and I'm trying to prioritize top six and above throughout Iowa and the Minnesota Wild. So we get a shitload of picks from the Panthers. Hopefully that works out for us, but we get rid of guys like Puzic and Schutz, which could be a very, very risky move. So... Now that the team is set, let's show you guys our draft picks. And, of course, we'll show you the lineups. As you can see, we have three first-round picks in the upcoming draft. I'm sure our own will be pretty damn good. Plenty of seconds, a trio of thirds, and plenty more draft picks towards the end in the final few rounds. So it should be a good draft for us. And hopefully, I think that's how we'll pretty much approach it, is just like any player we get that isn't good enough hopefully trade them to get somebody who is but here is the lineup for the nhl team the minnesota wild and uh yeah it's probably worse than last year or about equal it is nita Ryder, kopitar and daniel sprong kopitar 33 we are getting very close to trying to trade him he has four years left on his deal although obviously with how easily we're picking up first round picks for no good reason whatsoever I'm not too concerned about trading him for a ton of assets, but maybe it would be worth, and I don't know, I'll leave that guys up to you. Should we trade Kopitar in the next episode, maybe for Bjorkstrand or one of those high-end guys who have just been impossible for us to get? Anyway, it is Niederreiter, Kopitar, and Daniel Sprong, only at an 83. I'm pretty disappointed by that. I'm hoping for a good year out of him. Second line, it is Fiala, Dreisaitl, and Nikolai Ellers. Third line, Reader, McIntyre, and George Welch. We're going to keep Reader just because of the fact that we really could use him. And then the fourth line, it is Kay Shawary with Rodrigo Abols and Sinschlopfer, who has made it into this lineup. So I'm intrigued to see what that fourth line can do for us this year, as well as the development of McIntyre and Welch. Defensively, very similar to what it's been in the years past. Mueller and Yossi, of course. Spiza, I'm glad we resigned him. He will be with Igor Bermastrov, and then we have Stepan Fakovsky with Colin Fontana. So our defense is looking okay for once. I mean, it's not great, but it's looking okay. The goaltending, of course, is the same. It is Merz Likens in the last year of development with Ludovic Weber. Looking forward to seeing what these two can do uh, this year with a somewhat improved team. Down in the AHL, it's looking pretty good. Top line, Igor Kasparaitis, who was low top six, with the man, Russell Sexton, 75 overall, medium elite potential. And then Harvey Savage, that is a terrible name. Harvey Savage, medium top six. Of course, we just acquired him from the Lightning. Then we have Anisimov, who we acquired from the Panthers, with Sergei Malkin and Damian Riot. So all top nine players, although Riot now 23 years old. Third line, the veteran line of the Iowa Wild is Karnikov, Thurkauf, and Rehard Bukarts. The fourth line, Vyacheslav Semen with Rod Joseph, probably the worst name on the team, and Stanislav Zhamnov. So, decent. Everybody's at least bottom six. And we do have quite a bit of depth as well. Guys, I'm tempted to maybe trade Shevpolovs, Trigg, Klotz, Sorensen, Denisov people that are nice to have as depth in case of injuries, but we could work out and maybe get a little bit more, although obviously we're not hurting for draft picks. The defense, Rainier Gerber, the elite potential defenseman, and hopefully he lives up to it. He's playing with Jason Monador, low top four. Then we have Ralph Haish, who is medium a top six. He plays with Josh McKee 
our best defenseman down in the AHL. And the third line is Kelly Lyles, who we just drafted, playing with Alexei Volchenkov. The goaltending, they have very good goaltending. Down in Iowa, 280 overall goalies, Willie Tucker and Stefan Geisberger. Tucker, due to being younger, and the same overall, and potential for that matter, will be the starter. But there you have it, guys. That is the lineup for the team right now, unless we decide to trade Kopitar, which I can certainly look into it if you guys think that is what we should do. But anyway, that will do it for this episode. Let me know what you think of this team, the amount of draft picks we have coming up, and everything else that happened in this episode. As always, guys, if you have enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button to help support the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already to continue following this series, and I will see you guys in the next one.